Welcome to TPM Vids Disney Beat, where we talk about all things Disney. If you're new to the channel and like what you see, hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified when we upload a new video. You can also find us on all your favorite social media platforms. Good morning from the Transportation and Ticket Center. It's a little chilly out today, but it's still a great day for Magic Kingdom and for a park hopping video. Now, I was thinking of taking the ferry boat, but that looks like it's about to leave, so today is definitely a monorail day. Now, I've done a few of these park hopping videos in the past, but this one is gonna be a little different. Today's challenge is to ride every single roller coaster at Walt Disney World plus Test Track in just one day. It seems impossible, but if I time things right, I think we'll be able to get on these 10 rides. Wow, nice and smooth. Now this morning at 7 a.m., my fingers were quick and I did score boarding group number nine for Tron. The only thing with a low boarding group number is that you'll be called as soon as the park opens, which this morning is 8 a.m. Right now it's 8.10, so I still have about 50 minutes until my return window is up. Ah, looks like we're racing this minibus. Yes, 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 come on, come on. Yeah, we won. So the park is closing at 6 p.m. tonight for a party and it doesn't look all that busy. Today's gonna be a good day, I think. You know what? Crowds are looking really light so far. On the car right here, I did end up purchasing Genie Plus to make it a bit easier for the challenge today, but since half of the rides are at Magic Kingdom, I don't even think I'll really need it, but you know, I have it now, so I'll just use it. Before I arrived, I also bought an individual Lightning Lane for Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, which I probably won't need as well, but we have that now, and that return window begins at 11.50. Perfect, it's only 8.25. I still have plenty of time to make it into Tomorrowland. Ah, morning sun on the castle always looks stunning, doesn't it? Look at how she glows. Now this might be an unpopular opinion, but I'd be okay now if the old colors never return. Do you agree? Or do you want them to come back? Well, while you think about it, let's blast off into Tomorrowland. We made it, and there it is. Tron Light Cycle Run. Now who's ready to experience the newest ride at Walt Disney World? And look, it's only 8.34. There's still plenty of time to spare. The good thing about early morning Tron rides on party days is that the line is pretty much non-existent. Usually you wait about 45 minutes, but it's literally a walk-on, which I will not complain about. Users, prepare to be digitized into the world of Tron. Now just be advised that you are only allowed to film on this ride with a chest mounted GoPro and that's what I'm using right now. So for number 10, sit back and enjoy this trip through the grid. You know, the longer Tron is open, the more I forget it took them like five years to build, and I end up enjoying the ride a lot more now. Watch your step as you 
People might say it's short, but that's very, very common with typical launch coasters. I mean, look at Rock and Roller Coaster, the same thing. So it's only 9.05 and the park is still dead. You know what, since we're so close to Storybook Circus, why don't we just head to the Barnstormer? There's only a five minute wait, which means this ride is also a walk-on. So we're doing really well. I normally don't do this coaster because it's so short and the waits can get kind of long, but for the challenge, we gotta do it. So for number nine, let's fly through the sky with the great Goofini. Good work, folks. This is your old pal Goofy. Here we go. Now, Goofy's yell can actually be heard on another ride that's going to be on this list. As we go along, see if you're able to hear it. This coaster is so short, but the funny thing is that it actually makes Tron feel really, really long. I always joke and say that the walk through the exit is longer than the actual ride, so I timed it this time, and it took me 50 seconds to walk to the end. That's pretty much the length of the Barnstormer. Just a little observation for you. Now my next lightning lane is for Big Thunder Mountain at 9.50, so let's just start making our way over to Frontierland. Hmm, the park still isn't busy, but the line to meet Mirabelle is actually pretty long. I mean, she just started meeting at the end of September. You got the whole Madrigal family on the door, and then Mirabelle is hidden inside. She's in there. So if you want to meet her, Magic Kingdom is the place to be. Oh, oh, mouse ear down, and a package of gummies if anyone's hungry. I always love seeing the country bears roaming around Frontierland. It just adds to the overall atmosphere of the land, don't you think? And honestly, Magic Kingdom needs to bring back more roaming characters. I think we're at the point where the guests can handle this again. So I do have a lightning lane for Big Thunder Mountain, but it's only showing a 15 minute wait. So I'm just gonna use standby and modify this lightning lane for Space Mountain. Now where is space, 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 space. Uh, there we go. Again, this is practically a walk-on. It's actually perfect though because I can stop here for a second to admire my favorite view of Thunder Mountain. If you're looking for a really good photo spot, this is it. I could literally stand here all day and just watch it. So outside it said it was a 15 minute wait and after just walking through the queue, I've only waited five minutes. So we're doing pretty good so far. Now for number eight, let's sit back as we experience the wildest ride in the wilderness! You know, I feel like this waterfall hasn't been working for a while now. Has anyone noticed that? Or maybe the days I've been here, it's been cooler, so they just shut it off. Do they do that? I don't even know.
This guy was waving to everyone the entire ride. More people at the parks need this energy. Big Thunder Mountain never disappoints, right? It's truly a classic Disney ride. Now, we're already three rides down, and the next lightning lane is for Space Mountain. So, since we're here, why don't we just take the train over to that side of the park and check in on some of Tiana's Bayou Adventure construction. I mean, we're here. There is lots of active work going on for the new queue configuration, and you can really see a lot of it taking shape. I feel like in another month, this might be done. Then over at the front of the mountain, there was a lot of active work going on here as well. You can see the top has been fully sculpted and capped off, so it doesn't really feel like it's missing anything now. It's all coming together pretty quickly, and the ride hasn't even been closed for a year yet. Now, the real mystery is the progress on the show scenes inside, but I honestly can't wait to ride it. Like, I want to ride it right now, today. As always, keep an eye on your little one. There it is, Space Mountain, Walt Disney World's very first roller coaster. Now, it might be a bit rough and old, but it's definitely still a classic. Now, recently, Disney did implement a policy not allowing handheld objects on the ride anymore, so the POV you're about to see was recorded back last year. So, for number seven, let's travel into space on Space Mountain. Okay, so here's my gripe with this ride. Now, it's kind of fun, but an indoor coaster really needs an onboard soundtrack. Not to mention that the actual coaster track should probably be replaced really soon. I mean, it is nearing 50 years old, and I don't know how much longer these tracks can last. It will be interesting to see if Disney ever does refurbish the ride, because it definitely needs it. Who knows, we'll just have to wait and see. So it's only 11 a.m. and I still have 50 minutes before my lightning lane for Seven Dwarfs. So, I mean, the park is so dead that let's just go past some time before we continue the challenge.
finally, we can scan in for Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. Ah, oh, I just love that sound. Now, have you ever noticed the woodsman's axe in front of Snow White's cottage? Yeah, it's right there on the right-hand side. The bushes make it kind of hard to see, but it's such a fun little detail. Now, one more scan in, and we are ready to go. For number six, let's dig, dig, dig our way through the mine on the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. Do you see that hidden Mickey? I love how on the left of the lift hill you can see the shadows of the seven dwarves walking. Love this ride. I can't really see that much, but the seven dwarf figures inside the cottage minus Dopey were all recycled from Snow White's Scary Adventures. And you know what? I've never really noticed how much movement Snow White's animatronic actually has. I always thought it was more of a static figure, but she's definitely moving. Huh, learn something new every time. So it's only 12.30 and I've already been able to do five coasters, including three times on the Barnstormer and three times on Big Thunder plus Pirates, Little Mermaid, and Watch the Castle Show. Not too shabby for four hours in the park. Now I do have one more lightning lane for Jungle Cruise coming up, so I'm gonna do that and then start making my way to the monorail. Yeah, but for yourself stuff, it'll be fun if you wanted to. They cannot charge this boat, I only carry cash. So, here's the plan. It's 1.06 and the second boarding group drop for Guardians that began at 1 is still open. The only issue is that you need to be in the park to join and park hopping doesn't begin until 2pm. I cannot wait until they change that in January. Now sometimes they do let you in the park about 5-10 to 10 minutes before, so let's just cross our fingers, head to Epcot, and hopefully once I get there, boarding groups will still be available. All right, we have good news. They're letting park hoppers in 10 minutes early. Yes. And, oh yes, boarding groups are still open. Let's join. Perfect, group 153. The estimated wait is about six hours, which will bring us to 8 p.m. So you know what, that should all work out perfectly. Now, Epcot is the hub of the 100 Years of Wonder celebration here at Walt Disney World. There's not really too much happening here, but let's go check some of it out. 
I thought that when Moana opened, these construction walls would also be gone, but they are not. I just honestly can't wait for Epcot to be construction wall free. Actually, you know what? Why don't we just stop and check out Journey of Water while we're here? We have some time before heading to Hollywood Studios. I gotta say, I'm really impressed with how the entrance looks. It all blends in really well with this area of the park. Now, Journey of Water teaches us about the water cycle, and it begins with rain. I love all these moments that Spaceship Earth peeks out behind the trees and the rocks. This attraction is definitely a photogenic one. Now, the first interactive element you'll find are these water strings. Listen. Ah, music to my ears. Oh, and there are restrooms in here, just in case you were wondering. You never know when you gotta go. <laughs> now, the next stop is the stream. This is where you can wave to the water and then it waves back. It's cute. Next is the wetland, where the stream spreads out and soaks the soil. If you don't want to walk through a stream of water and possibly get your feet wet, there is also a dry path. Next is the spring. This is where the water moves underground. Some of the water does get pushed back to the surface, and here it bubbles up to the light. In this case, it'll bubble right up to your hand. Coming up to the land, this is where you get to walk through this really cool water curtain, where just at the last minute, pure Disney magic. Next, you approach the lake, where you can find Tefiti. This is definitely one of the most picturesque spots in the entire walkthrough. Literally everyone wanted a picture here. And you know what? I don't blame them. Then you pass the jumping fountains of the river and then make it to the best part, the ocean. You just throw your hands up and then... Honestly, this attraction would be the perfect place to be on a really hot day. After physically going through the attraction, I think Disney did a fantastic job with Journey of Water. Not everything needs to be these elaborate e-ticket rides. It really does teach you about the water cycle and it feels right at home here at Epcot. So I mentioned earlier that Epcot is the home for the 100 Years of Wonder celebration at Walt Disney World. In the Land Pavilion, they're currently showing the original Soarin' Over California, and in the Magic Eye Theater, you can meet both Mickey and Minnie in their celebration outfits. And there's also this sign with a statue of Mickey. Again, not a whole lot going on. Okay, so I just booked a lightning lane for Rock and Roller Coaster at 310. So I think we should probably make our way over to Hollywood Studios. Let's do this. Park number three. How's it going? Oh, I just love the sights and sounds of Hollywood Boulevard. Don't you? The glitz and glam of old Hollywood is everywhere you turn. Then there's Rock and Roller Coaster. Totally not set in the era of old Hollywood, but it's still a great ride. You know what, I think it just came back up after being down, but I mean, either way, I'm still gonna use this lightning lane because I have it. So let's head into G-Force Records. Wow, all right. How do, people? All right. Hey, don't mind us, we'll be finished in just a minute. Hey, yeah. hey, what? hey! What? What's a hey? hey. How you what are doing? you guys still doing here? You were supposed to be at a show. I'm working. Now. I'd like to introduce our lovely manager. Yeah, uh, she's oh. usually not like this. Folks. Yeah, she's usually worse. I heard that. <laughs> Where is my limo? Good. Okay, come on, guys. Please get in the car. Sorry, folks. We gotta go. Come on. Chris, can you grab my black list, Paul? Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? We can't leave these people here like this. <laughs> we can't. No. Oh. Come on, you know how we feel about our fans. Yeah, yeah that's right. Well, guys, what do you expect me to do? Send them all with you? Yeah. Hey, Steven, how about when? you guys backstage passes? Wait a minute. I love that idea. How about some backstage passes? Yeah, what do you think? Yeah. 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 Make it happen. Give me some. Okay. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'll make it happen. All right, now all right. get out of here. We got it. We got I need all of you. See ya. Have a nice ride. Hi, Sal. It's me. Listen, I'm going to need a bigger car. Make it a stretch. In fact, make it a super stretch. Great. Excuse me. Okay, folks. Look, the show is all the way across town. But I got you a really fast car. Okay, wait. It's out in the alley. 
Walking into this loading area, I always get so hyped seeing the launch. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So I actually asked for the front row because I realized I've never actually sat in the front on this coaster. Ever. So for number five, get ready to ride on Rock and Roller Coaster. Let's do this. All right, Aerosmith is taking the stage. Check out Steven Tyler's hat. Okay, Ellie, crank it up, because we're getting ready to rock on this exclusive live broadcast. This coaster has surprisingly held up pretty well. During its last refurbishment, Disney really made all the set pieces inside a lot more vibrant. It's all looking really good. So tonight the park is actually closing at 5 p.m. for this special event, but there's still another 30 minutes before the park actually closes. Slinky Dog Dash is showing a 50 minute wait, but just looking at that queue, I can tell you this isn't 50 minutes. Yeah, this definitely is not 50 minutes. So let's see how long it actually takes. I love all the details in Toy Story Land, but one of my favorites is Wheezy's box. So he's a bath toy, but if you look at the bottom, he can't be used in water. So that explains why his squeaker breaks. Go figure. Okay, our wait time so far has been 18 minutes and I'm practically at the front. Hey, that's gonna be me in a second. Okay, so total wait time was 31 minutes, not 50. So for number four, let's take a ride through Andy's backyard on Slinky Dog Dash.
and grab your things and step out to your right. I would ride this coaster a lot more if the lines weren't always so long, but half an hour is definitely justifiable for Slinky Dog. I still remember opening day when it was like 300 minutes. Now that was a long line. What's the longest you would wait for Slinky Dog Dash? Okay guys, it's time to head to Animal Kingdom. Let's hop on a bus and get wild for park number 4. We made it! Animal Kingdom is truly the park with all the details, and that's really thanks to former Imagineer Joe Rohde. He's literally an Imagineering god. I gotta say, it's so strange seeing these parking trams back at Animal Kingdom. They've been gone for so long that I forgot the park even had them. I love that all these people are leaving, and here I am at 545 heading into the park on a mission. I'm here for one ride and one ride only, once this light eventually turns green. Come on, come on. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. We are in. Let's head towards Asia. Nothing beats Golden Hour here at Animal Kingdom. The Tree of Life always looks stunning. But enough of that, we have a ride to do. Let's go. Okay, I gotta stop once more to admire Golden Hour on Expedition Everest. The light, the shadows, the colors, just everything is perfect. Now, even though there is a single rider line and it is open, I did make a lightning lane for literally just right now. I mean, might as well use it, right? Expedition Everest is one of my favorite queues. It really tells the story. There's just so much detail and everything is so lived in. Again, Joe Rohde at his finest. For number three, let's get ready to board this train into the Himalayas to see if we can spot that Yeti. I mean, we'll see the Disco Yeti, of course. Expedition Everest is one ride I could literally go on over and over and over again. You know what? 
It's only just after 6, and the single rider line is open, so technically I still have plenty of time. Okay, you know what, let's single rider this one again. I actually lucked out and almost got the front row, so this should be good. Let's do this. The front two rows gives you such a great reveal of the mountain. It's just perfect. stick in quite some time now. I feel like he's MIA like 90% of the time. This is not the day to get stuck. Whew, close call. Well, Animal Kingdom, it's been a slice, but the sun's starting to set and I need to get back to Epcot. Okay, let's check and see what bus stop we're at. Okay, it looks like number two. Literally everyone has the same idea to head to Epcot. Actually, you know what? It's the only park you can hop to right now. Both Magic Kingdom and Hollywood Studios are closed to day guests, so that's fun. Hopefully I get on this next bus. Okay, not my bus. Finally, the Epcot bus. Let's go. Epcot, we meet again. I feel like I was just here. I don't think I've ever made five park visits in one day, so this is definitely a record of mine. Um, yep, yeah, yeah, my credit card will not get me into the park. There we go. Mm -hmm. Does anyone else get antsy waiting for the light to turn green? I feel like it takes forever sometimes. Thank you. Now, my Guardians group still hasn't been called yet, so I'm just gonna head over to Test Track and do that. Like always, the single rider line is open. I don't actually remember any time where it hasn't been open. So if you are solo or don't mind splitting up, the single rider line can save you a lot of time. I'm honestly not really feeling like designing my own car today, and honestly, I never really do. I just want to ride the fastest ride at Walt Disney World, and it looks like there's hardly anyone else in this line. So for number two, let's take a spin on Test Track. Inside the vehicle at all times. Supervise 
centralización de control de sensores de seguridad está a la vuelta de la esquina. Por su seguridad, mantenga sus manos, brazos, pies y piernas dentro del vehículo y cuida los niños. I'm still a firm believer that the original Test Track was better, but I cannot wait for Disney to announce more details about Test Track 3.0. That refurbishment looks really, really promising. Alright, so the time is here. My boarding group for Guardians was called while I was on Test Track. So, for number one, 
Let's blast off with the Guardians of the Galaxy on Cosmic Rewind and see what song we get. songs for the ride. I've said it once and I'll say it again. Next to Expedition Everest, Cosmic Rewind is one of the best roller coasters at Walt Disney World. Hands down. So there we have it, I actually completed the challenge. More than 10 rides today, 4 different parks, 5 different park visits, and almost 25,000 steps later. It was exhausting, but I'd say it was a huge success. So what is your favorite roller coaster at Walt Disney World? I'd love to know. Leave a comment down below to start a conversation, and don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video.